Hello and welcome back to our RTS series. Currently we've got our camera working and we've now also got our selection tools working. In this episode we'll start work on getting the AI for our units here to move around the map when we right click to tell them to move. So currently we have units and these units are simply just skeletal classes uh, that we can add AI onto now. So let's work on the AI of these things. The first thing we need is an AI controller to control these things walking about. So we're going to go add blueprint class and search for in the search box AI controller. If you don't see this search box, just expand open the all classes here. Find AI controller, choose that and click select. And we'll call this one unit AI. And in unit AI, we're going to assign that to unit base. So go into unit base. And on the right hand side in the class default settings, you'll find AI controller class. You will choose unit AI. Hit compile and close that. We're now going to make a behavior tree. Now we need a behavior tree because we need them to make decisions about when to attack and what else to do when they reach uh, resources and so forth. So we're going to go and right click and choose artificial intelligence behavior tree. We call this one unit behavior. And we also alongside that need a blackboard. And a blackboard is used to store temporary values to, uh, to communicate between different tasks that the AI is doing. So we're going to go into unit blackboard. Okay, so there's our components we need for our uh, AI. We're going to then go into AI controller, the unit AI. I'm going to take to run that blackboard by uh, that behavior tree, sorry, on the event begin play. So do run behavior tree. I'm going to choose the one that we've just made. Compile and save. We're done here for now. We'll be back here later. And we're then going to tell our unit behavior tree here to set up the movement. Now the movement is going to be set by a sequence of events. So the first sequence is going to be finding a location and making sure it's there and then walking to that location. So let's go down here and do a sequence. Oh, sorry, selector, sorry, my bad. Selector, and then a sequence. And this first sequence, it can handle traversal. So I'm going to name the node here, travel. Okay, and we only want to travel when we've got values set to it. Now the values we're going to set to it are based in the blackboard. So go to blackboard over here, go to new key, and choose a new vector. And you'll name this vector target location. Hit save. Go back to your behavior tree. And on this behavior tree, on the travel here, right click on it, add decorator, and choose blackboard. On the blackboard base condition, when you select it, you can choose what it's going to consider before it goes into this node. So it's sort of like a gate. It essentially does a little check first, and then it lets it go through or blocks it. So in here, we can choose what is going to be changed here. And this is a Blackboard based one. So it's going to look at the Blackboard values. And we're going to choose which Blackboard key to look at. I'm going to choose the target location. Now I'm going to choose whether or not it is set to something. So is it set or is it not set? I'm going to make sure it's set is set. And leave it like that. And then on the travel here, we're going to do move to. And the move to here is going to be set to that target location. Now the move to, you can change the acceptable radius if you want uh, and all these other settings here. The other thing I'm going to change here is the radius. So I'm going to change that radius there to 50. I may increase that later, we'll see how that looks. But for now, that will do. Hit save and we'll close that. So now these units here, I'm going to try and move to that in target location. Now we need a nav mesh before they can even be able to think about moving. So search in your place actors here for a nav mesh. Bounds volume. Put that into your scene. And I like to place this in the center of the map. So do zero, zero, zero. And if I hit F on the keyboard, it will take me to it. There it is. And I'll make it big enough to cover the whole map. So let's go scroll down here and you'll see the brush settings for X, Y, and Z. I'm gonna change that here to uh, I don't know, let's do 10,000.
and hit P on your keyboard and you'll see the available space that they can walk around in. Uh, so obviously I need to make it a lot bigger. So let's add a few more zeros to this. So I'm going to do another zero. Uh, the Z doesn't have to be that high, so I can turn the head Z down, that's fine, do that. You'll see that it has to build navigation, and because of the landscape, navigations are quite large. So you want to um, just make sure that that's all set before you continue. They say it's building navigation, just wait for it to finish doing that. To hide the nav mesh, you just hit P and it will hide it from your preview uh, screen. Um, next, we need to make it so that when we right click on the environment, that the characters will then go to that location based on which ones we've got selected. So if you go to your RTS controller, inside your RTS controller, we're going to go and make a new event for the right mouse button. And the right mouse button is going to be used for uh, sending units to travel to locations to attack. You can also right click on other actors inside your world to uh, see their stats, upgrade them, do damage, pick them up, whatever it may be. You can do other stuff with them. So we want to make sure we're dealing with something that isn't our any unit that we can select on. So we're going to do our, what we've done up here for our left mouse button, get hit result under cursor. We're going to copy that and put that into our right mouse button. So that's going to check whether or not there's actually anything interactable underneath us. If there is, later on we'll be adding stuff to that so that we can upgrade them, select them, do stuff with them. But if it's not, and we just hit click in somewhere in the world, we want to tell the uh, all our units to move to that location. So on the force here, we're going to do another hit result under curse, uh, cursor by channel. So I'm going to copy that and paste that. And this is going to do a hit result. We, oh, first of all, we're going to change the trace channel to visibility. And then we do the hit result. We're going to split that. And we'll get the hit result location here. And now we need to send that location to the blackboard of each of our units. So for each of our units, we're going to drag our unit selection out. We'll get do for each and now we'll cycle through each of our units and for each one we're going to drag the array element out and get the blackboard remember the blackboard is where that target location value is set so we need to get the blackboard to set the value to it then on the return value here with the blackboard component we're going to set blackboard value as vector and that will go into the loop body of our which loop now the key name, we can do make literal name. And you type in target location, which is the same name as it is on our blackboard. Then our vector value is going to come from our hit result location. Drag that out there. Gonna add a little reroute in there to make it a bit neater. And there you have it. And that's it. So hit compile and save. And let's go into our game to test this out. So if I right click somewhere, nothing happens. But if I select unit and right click, off they move. Obviously not animated yet, we'll deal with that later. But then if I select all these units and then right click, off they go. I can select all these units again, right click and away they go. And I click again. And you can see that they're moving now to those locations. So the current thing we've got to do as well is we have to tell when we want the movement to change. So for example, if I select my units here and right click, if I right click now somewhere else, they won't change that direction until they've reached their final point there and then they'll move. Now the reason why it does that is because in their um, behavior tree, it goes into move two and it stays in move two and reaches it until it reaches that location. Now, what we can do here is we're going to tell our blackboard base condition here to, to abort if target location has changed at all. So over the right hand side, you'll see on result change. And that we want to change based on the observer aborts. Now, you've got two options. You've got value change and result change. Now, result change refers to this key query, whether it's set or not set. On value change is that whenever the value of target location is changed somewhat, which is what we want. So go to on value changed and do observer boards and do self. Hit save and that will now abort this when the value changes in the target location. Meaning abort it and then do it again. So if I hit play now, select those units, right click and I'll right click now over here 
and off they go. And you can micromanage them around the map like so. I select just one unit and send him off that way. Send you off this way. Over there. And there you have basic movement for our AI. So in the next episode, we're going to go through and show you how we can do other things with the AI, such as getting them to go and collect uh, uh, wood and resources and bring them back to the player. Uh, but before we go on to that, we need to actually build the base that we need for the player to build uh, and re retrieve those materials. Once we've got those materials, we can build uh, more units, build more base st structures and start building up our RTS combat. So join us in those next episodes right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can watch all my content before everyone else for, uh, for just $1 a month, months ahead of YouTube releases. Thanks again to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thank you again so, so much. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out, so thank you again so much. That's it for me, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.